So I saw the recent pictures from an Indonesian volcano exploding, and I thought, what in the world is happening? Did Frodo and Gollum just wrestle the One Ring into Mount Doom again? Indonesia is seismically active. It's part of the Ring of Fire, where eruptions are pretty common. But seeing Mount Ruang explode three times this week, and again earlier last month, and it looking like this, with lightning shooting all over the place, and there's a tsunami risk for neighboring islands? We just had to ask, how? So I just want to be clear, the lightning you see here isn't just part of some other storm that rolled in coincidentally at the same time as the eruption. This lightning formed because of the eruption. So sometimes when a volcano does its thing, the lava just sort of dribbles out and down the mountain. But other times, it explodes upwards into this massive column of ash, dust, rock, gas, lava, and that soupy, sooty mess is ionizing. What does that mean? Well, when you rub two things together, what can happen is that you're actually like scraping electrons off of atoms. They're bouncing around. Some atoms gain electrons, some atoms lose them. So, you know, when you rub your socks on carpet or go down a, a plastic slide or you rub a balloon on your hair, all that static electricity, that's just electrons getting dislodged, flying around everywhere, causing chaos. In an ash plume, the same thing is happening. All the heat and friction from all the junk in that plume rubbing and knocking against itself causes electrons to bounce around. What you end up with is a jumble of ions. Negative ions when you've got too many electrons and positive ions when you have too few. Now, in the chaos of the plume, you separate those ions enough, they'll naturally want to equalize. They'll kind of want to balance out. And with enough energy buildup and enough of a difference between all the pluses and all the minuses, you get, boom, lightning. These great big arcs of electricity say hello to volcanic lightning. A terrifying scene as fire and lightning fill the sky. But if that's how volcanoes make lightning, why don't we see that every time there's a big plume of ash? Places where there are a lot of explosive volcanoes, like where uh, two um, of the Earth's plates are colliding, uh, one is going under the other, like in Indonesia, um, can have a lot of explosive eruptions. And then the weather conditions, like the amount of moisture available, can also play a role in whether there's a lot of lightning. And that's not the only thing that sets this volcano apart from many others. Indonesian authorities also put its citizens on high tsunami alert. When Mount Ruang first erupted a couple of weeks ago, it caused all sorts of problems. Flights were disrupted, for one, hundreds of them, affecting tens of thousands of passengers. But since then, with more and more eruptions that followed, including several this week, Somewhere around 12,000 people are being told to evacuate the area for fear that the volcano would cause a tsunami. Remember, Mount Ruang is on a tiny island. There's another bigger island right beside it. They fled, many of them, north to Sayau Island. The thought was that what could happen was you'd have such an explosive eruption that you'd have almost like an avalanche of rock and lava into the ocean, which could displace millions of cubic meters of water. It's like dropping a car into a swimming pool. It creates big waves that splash up and out. And if one of those big waves hits a city, that's a deadly tsunami. So normally we, you know, we think of ash, we think of lava, we think of mud flows, but we don't think of tsunami. And it's actually happened before in Indonesia, 2018, Mount Krakatoa. An eruption caused a huge part of the volcano itself to collapse over two thirds of its volume. Like before the eruption, this volcano was more than 300 meters high. After the eruption, it was about 100 meters high. These huge chunks of earth and rock slid into the ocean and that displaced so much water, it created these big five meter high waves that ended up devastating hundreds of kilometers of coastline killing more than 400 people, injuring nearly 15,000 more, and displacing about 40,000 people. Now, 
not everyone thinks a tsunami may even come with Mount Ruang this time, but everyone does seem to agree it's impossible to know for sure, and taking precautions just makes sense. Because there's another island right nearby, the people are very close, and that means if a tsunami did happen, there'd be almost no warning. Now, fortunately, even with as many recent blow-ups of Mount Ruang as we've seen so far, and even with the country putting affected communities at the highest possible threat level, so far, no deaths, no injuries. Sure, small rocks are falling onto people's homes, ash blotted out the sun enough for drivers to need headlights on during the day, and it's wafting west as far as Malaysia. But so far, not a catastrophe. Just a spectacular, albeit dangerous, display of earth, fire, and lightning.